watch me on the radio in five minutes as I'm ready to show that. Thank you. officially right now 9.30 and it's time for the segment Be All You Can Be with Larry Olushala, the catalyst. And I have uh, with us also uh, his guest for today, uh, Omi Lola, I need to get the name right, Omi Lola Oshikoya. I think I got it right, right? Yes, you did. did. Larry, first of all, welcome uh, to the show and uh, I am very excited about today's show because uh, you mentioned earlier when I are talking money today. And that's a, that's a topic I enjoy talking about. Yes, so, <laughs> yes, 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 Douglas, man. It's been really interesting chatting with you since when I came in. Um, we're we're going to miss Chris today, but really with Douglas, I know we're going to have a fantastic show. And on the on, on, on the show with us today is the financial coach, Omi Lola Oshikoya. Omi, what's Hello. up? Hello, Nigeria. Good to be back on the show again. So we're talking money today, Omilola. Yes, we are. You know, and you were on the show last week, uh, yes. and um, what I'd really love for us to do f uh, to kick the show off is a recap from last week, um, and you know, uh, let's 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 land from last week. Then we'll take off uh, on talking how to make money, uh, how to save money, how to invest money, how to multiply money. So. Kick off from last week, a uh, quick summary of what you talked about and uh, the takeaway points. Okay, thank you, Coach. Um, last week we talked about how to manage money. Basically, I mentioned that when I talk about wealth, I focus on the four hows, which is how to create wealth, how to manage wealth, how to grow wealth, and how to use wealth. And so that's important for young people to um, know how to manage their finances. We looked at a couple of stories of people that were wealthy at one point in their lives. Um, but um, eventually lost all their money. We also talked about the common mistakes um, young people make in terms of money and then I also um, gave some tips on um, different goals that young people should set in terms of financial goals and also the financial process, process, planning process. Today we're going to be talking about how to create money and I know that is a hot topic. Everybody wants to know how to make money because for you to be able to manage money you have to be able to know how to create it first of all. Wow, so Omilola, what is this thing called money? Money, money, everybody wants, you know, they say money, kudi, oh, oh. in fact, MKO, they say it's spelled money, kudi, oh, oh. that's why it was so rich. What is this thing called money? Well, money is actually just paper, it's just a form of exchange, it's what you use in terms of um, to in terms of exchange of goods and services. So for instance, prior to um, paper money, we had um, the trade by butter. So for instance, if I wanted to get like a cow and then I had like a couple of chickens, I'll give you my chickens and then you give me the cow and then we went into cowry and then um, before money was developed. So money basically is just a means of exchange. It's like I said last week, it's just one aspect of wealth. Wealth is very important, but we are focusing on money here today. Wow. Ah, but let's let's even look at it too. I can't let you rest on that. You said you said money and wealth, they're two different things. Right? Yes. I mean and the money is just simply a teeny weeny aspect of wealth. What yeah. do you mean by that? Um wealth is um health as well. So wow. there's no point in having so much money and you're on hospital bed and you're going to die in a couple of days. Or you find that people like Bill Gates, they have so much money, Warren Buffett, but all they're doing is giving out money. They're giving it out. Warren Buffett is giving out about, I think, 99.9% of his um, money. You know, so they're looking for fulfillment. So health is um, um, wealth. Also power and influence. Um, you look at someone like a Pastor Adeboe, he can wake up today and say he's going to Houston, and I bet you 100 people will make their master bedrooms available for him. Or if he says he wants a brand new Range Rover Sports today, tomorrow morning you find 100 Range Rover Sports in front of his house. He, he may not have the cash, but he has power, he has influence. Wow, so what, what I hear from you is there are many dimensions to wealth. Yes. The first dimension to wealth is, um, you know, health. Uh, spiritual, emotional, psychological, and physical exactly. health. The second dimension to wealth is cash flow, which is 
money that we're talking about exactly. today. How you make it, how you invest it, how you save it, yeah. you know, how you multiply. And the third is power and influence. Mm -hmm. um, and you and you use the example Pastor Adeboe. You know, Pastor Adeboe wields so much power. He wields so much influence, such that if he releases a book today, mm -hmm. all members of Redeem will buy it. And that influence in itself translates into cash. Exactly. So if that book is ten dollars and you know 50 million or 10 million redeemed members buy that translate that into money that is money <laughs> ladies and gentlemen exactly. so so you know um what are the secrets um or what tips would you like to share with us about you know making money 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 okay so basically i have divided it into two yeah. so you find that you can make money one way is either through investments, mm -hmm. second way is earning money. Mm -hmm. But in terms of investments, actually I like to put that under under how to grow wealth, how to grow money, because you need cash to be able to make investments. If you don't already have the wealth, how are you going to invest? Mm -hmm. So for me that is growing wealth. Mm -hmm. um, so when it comes to <clears throat> so excuse me, how to create wealth, I would like to focus on earning money. And there are two ways primarily. One as an employee. So for instance, you can get a job um, work maybe 30 years with financial discipline you're saving money and then you also invest your money you can make some some money or if you get um, a high profile job like um, back in the day the tech companies or investment banking or even now social media you find that a lot of companies are looking for social media jockeys and uh, managers yeah. and then you, within like 10 years you can make a lot of money and save um, however I think the, the big the bigger pie is in earning your own owning your own business. And as why do I say that? As an entrepreneur. And why do I say that? Um, basically, according to a study, 95% of the world population are employees. Interestingly, they only own 5% of the world's wealth. Wow. The 5% who are entrepreneurs own 95% of the world's wealth. So clearly, they're doing something hold right. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What are you saying tonight? <laughs> I'm yeah. not saying you should leave your job. <laughs> Well, well, let, 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 let's balance it here. What I hear is that 5% of the world's wealth is owned by employees, yes. which means that you can become extremely wealthy as an employee. Yes. You don't have to own your own business exactly. to be wealthy. Exactly. However, 95% of the world's wealth is owned by entrepreneurs exactly. who own their enterprises, exactly. which means that there are two dimensions to wealth, cre wealth creation. Employee who is disciplined, that's the key word that I heard from you, and an employer or an entrepreneur who is also disciplined. Exactly. The key word here is financial discipline. discipline. So go on, Amilola. Okay, so basically, and I think entrepreneurship is the solution to Nigeria's problems mm -hmm. um, or opportunities. I mean, Nigeria is the entrepreneur's dream. You find that we have, I, I refuse to call them problems, I see them as opportunities. I mean, also look at our population. We have uh, estimated about 170 million. to 200 million people. Now, that is a lot. And unfortunately, people don't understand it. So you start a business and you're targeting the high net worth individuals, which are roughly about 10%. But the money is in the masses. And so, for instance, look at a company like Primark in England. What are they selling? Cheap goods. Primark turned over in 2013 four billion pounds. In you know, and over here in Nigeria, how many people manufacture Nigeria-made clothes that are cheap and affordable that the average man can buy a pair of jeans? You know, and so if someone can tap into that, that is an opportunity to make so much money. That's why you find the retail giants like um, Shoprite coming to Nigeria. The Shoprite in Ikeja is the um, I think is the they're making the most money out of all the shop rights in Africa. Yes. Four points wow. is the the most four points in Nigeria is the most profitable four points okay. in the whole of the world. Let, let me even show. You. Sorry, in the whole world. Let me, let, let me even show you. You know, I was I was having a chat with a very very respectable source, and they said that as at the tenth, as at the eighth of December, yes. twenty thirteen, right? Shop right in Kedja wasn't making a lot of money. But between the 8th of December and the 30th of December 2013, ShopRite Ikeja made one billion. One billion exactly. in about 24 or 23 days. There's too much money in Nigeria. Five million people are. That's where the money is. Look, Aliko Dangote moved from 
160 richest man in the world to the world's 24th richest man in the world mm -hmm. in a matter of three to five years because he focused on, on his business that speaks to the bottom of the okay. pyramid. Cement, people must buy, they must build homes, people must live in homes. Yeah. Food, people must eat, people must eat. Sugar, flour, you know, bread. Uh, spaghetti you know people must eat and people must live in houses and you talked about clothes do you know the rich the third richest man in the world is the owner of what retail store um, uh -huh. that's Walmart no no no, no no that's a question for the audience now we will take a, a music break now and we will wait for you to call in on 0810265029 0810265029 we want you to answer that question the third third richest man in the world is the owner of what retail store in the world yeah, yeah. Uh, who is on the line hi for me uh, this is be all you can be with the capitalist who is the third richest man in the world and what retail store does he uh, control sorry it's Zara, the Spanish brand, Zara. The, the Spanish brand, Zara. Wow, fantastic. And his name is Amancio Ortega. And he's worth oh, yeah. $64 billion. For me, what do you do? I'm an interior decorator. You're an interior decorator. So my prophecy for you and my prayer for you this year is you're making too much money. And uh, by the end of the year 2014, uh, you will kick off a, a money spinning uh, a, a venture that will make you too much money. How, how do you like that prayer? Amen. <laughs> Thank you for well, I, I, just, I just tuned into your station and I, I don't even know what station this is. This is, this is 99.9, .9, uh, the beat. Um, and uh, this is Be All You Can oh. Be with the Catalyst, Lanry Olushola. And you can follow us at the at Lanry Olushola, uh, where we're, we're going to be sharing more, more, more wealth creation and, 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 and money tips. Thank you for calling in. Awesome. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Yeah.